Today we're going to be talking about the spring equinox and all things spring, all things flowers. What does it mean to be in this spring or equinox portal here in the southern hemisphere at the moment and what can you do to ride this energy at this time and honour this solar festival or Sabbath? Hello and welcome to the Awakened Divine Feminine Podcast. I am Evening Star Nightwalker and I am your host and today we're talking about the Spring Equinox. What is the Spring Equinox and you know how does it reflect on our daily life and how can we tune into the energies of these Sabbaths or solar festivals to actually awaken and unlock places within us like the saying, as within so without, as above, so below, when we actually start to live back in the traditional, I want to say birth, it is our birthright to be cyclical beings. And when we actually start to tune into our cyclical nature, as women, we tune into our menstrual cycle, our hormonal flow, we tune into the Sabbaths, we can tune into the lunar phases, we can tune into all of the different things like our seasons and all of that sort of stuff to all that sort of stuff. It's not just stuff. It is the rhythm and flow of everything. And I don't want to just call it stuff because it's like the very lifeblood of what I live by. And um, sorry, stuff just sounded like it was lightning, this portal. And this portal is anything but light. When we think of spring, what are the energies and words that come to you? Spring is on the uh, wheel of life or the, the medicine wheel or even the astrological wheel, the spring is in the east. And our spring energy is all about sunrise, growth. It is where the roses are in a tight bud. It's the maiden energy. This is the energy where we've gone from in bulk, which is the beginning of spring, to now the spring equinox. And the spring equinox is when we have equal day and equal night. Um, And it's that beautiful balancing act between what part of our lives are in balance and what part of our lives are out of balance. And as we flow with this energy and as we open to it, we start to feel into what the spring equinox traditionally was, would mark. And it, it is that kind of middle of spring. Its traditional name is, and I will say this wrong because I always do, Ostra, which sounds like Easter. And in the Northern Hemisphere, you actually do get the spring equinox that falls at Easter. But in the summer, Southern Hemisphere, we're a bit out of whack with what we call And how and when we celebrate those sort of big, probably more um, post-Christian, not post-Christian, but, you know, post-pagan ceremonies. The ones that were devised by, you know, the patriarchy, Christianity and things to give these solar festivals more of a commercial and um, watered down approach to what they actually mean. But this Yosta energy, this spring equinox is where childhood ends and the maiden or the young man is birthed. And this maiden energy would be around the age of, you know, 11 to 14. Uh, It's the start of our menarch. And it is where we often in today's society get trapped in thinking this is the only place to live. We want to be in this fertile you know, the rose hasn't actually bloomed yet. It's just a bud. It's the young maiden is what we see as being beautiful in our magazines and all of that sort of thing. But if we actually start to look at the whole wheel of life and see that as we move from this eastern point of the wheel in Australia um, or the southern hemisphere and we're moving through to the north, which is our our mother, it is the summer solstice then we move around to the west 
where we get our Maga, which is that kind of beautiful grandma energy, and it's the sunset, and it is the autumn equinox or the harvest. And if we look at our life in the way of this wheel, you know, obviously that keeps going down around to the dark moon and the crone, and all of these beautiful energies make up what we call the wheel of life. But as we approach this portal of the spring equinox, we are approaching the maiden within. A really beautiful question to ask yourself is, how was my first menarch? You know, when you first got your first bleed, what happened for you? Was it celebrated and you were given a beautiful menarchy box and you were, you know, that might have included like hot packs and blankets and journal and pen and whatever else it might be that symbolize this beautiful turning point. And it's this turning point that sometimes and most of the time and most of the women I work with say that they got their period, they were either given, one of my girlfriends was given her wallet by her dad. He didn't know what to do. He's like, here, we'll just take that, go. Um, And other women, other young girls have spoken to me about being given, you know, pain medication and some pads and said, look, this is going to happen for the next 40 years. You're just going to have to suck it up and get over it. It sucks. And That's in regard to our menstrual cycle. And this is kind of that rite of passage that this spring equinox opens for us. And it's asking our inner maiden, how did you feel when you had your first bleed and you came from being a child into a young lady or from a child into a young man? And if it wasn't celebrated, how would you have liked it to have been celebrated? And because ultimately with our rites of passage, the way we treat Anyone in a certain rite of passage actually shows you what the next stage of their life would be like. So, going through a rite of passage, at passage, <laughs> going through a rite of passage at Menarche, Menarche, whatever you want to call it, um, or your first bleed, actually, what you witness around you shows you how your society values motherhood because that's the next rite of passage. And as we often suppress this time, we often suppress every month, sometimes just taking the pill to continue not to bleed and to, you know, have this narrative that this part of our bodies, this part of our life, this, you know, being a bleeding woman is something to, of a curse where Ultimately, this springtime, spring equinox maiden energy is where a young girl first sees her power. She meets her power at this time. This time is like where the flowers are starting to come out. There's not a huge amount of smell and everything yet. If you think of that, you know, tight rosebud, the the Valentine's rose, you don't have a strong scent in that flower yet, but it is beautiful. However, our society says we must stay like this and not actually fully bloom, become gorgeously smelling, attract, you know, all the bees to us because we're magnetic and gorgeous in our mothering summer solstice energy. And then we definitely in this society don't want to go past the summer solstice and into the decline or the decay. But if we don't, we don't harvest. And through our mothering years or through our bleeding years, as I said, a maiden meets her power when she comes to her first bleed. And this spring equinox time is that exact energy. This is where we get to actually, if we've been living a life that's out of alignment, you know, what is coming up and showing you, you know, this is your gift. This is your magic. What is it inside of you that truly wants to shine? This is where we meet our power. Through our menstruating years, through the years of motherhood, we actually get to practice our power. And if we, de- you know, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Defy or um, deny this decline of energy from summer solstice all the way around to the autumn equinox. And like in our fields, we don't actually often let things fully decay and compost and put the nutrients and soils back in soils, the nutrients and everything back into the soil to give it more fertility, to give it that 
oomph and everything. We just put chemicals in and everything else. And hopefully it then stays, or the intention is hopefully that it stays in this, you know, maiden fertile ground forever. And it's no way to live because the maiden is unwise. She is full of potential. She's meeting her power for the first time. And there is so much brewing and bubbling inside of her that is innocent, that is unworldly, but it is power in unto itself. This energy has a gorgeous balance of I am now stepping into who I am and who is it that I really want to be. This is often a time where, you know, it's the teenage the beginning of the the terrible teenage years where the defiance and rebellion sits in one because we're lacking the rite of passage to take our young kids into their power and two because they're trying our children are trying to define themselves outside of the family and not given a sense of belonging to themselves outside of who everyone thinks they should be so rebellion starts but this is also a time where we can have our inner rebel come out. This can be a time of spring equinox where we can feel out of balance when things just aren't in alignment with who we know deep down we can be. So really witness and watch what your inner maiden is trying to show you at this beautiful spring equinox portal. And even sit down with a pen and paper and write at the top, dear inner maiden, what do you have to tell me? And you might come up with some stories that need to be healed. You might come up with how she wanted to be honoured and celebrated. And you can then go and enact this beautiful ceremony for yourself to help honour and celebrate that beautiful rebellious teenager within. And by doing all of this work, we help to peel back the onion layers of all of the woundings and the stories that things that we hoped would have been one way but actually ended up another, the stories that we have that our, you know, our parents and our siblings don't share but it was our interpretation of what happened to us. And you know, I am such an astrology nerd and I love the blueprint that astrology gives us in that sense of being able to say, well, you were born with Chiron, well, I was born with Chiron in the second house at one degree and I have this lifetime to learn about, in, yeah, so in the second house, one degree, in Taurus. So I am here to learn about the wound of my body, the wounds in my beliefs and my thought patterns, and so about self-nourishment and self-value. And then you look at the work that I do, which is all about helping women to rise into their power through self-nourishment, through self-love, through soul connection to aligning with the beliefs that actually light you up instead of the beliefs that we were raised with that keep you in a box and keep you playing small. Because every single one of us in this world, man, woman, cat, dog, you know, it's every single one of us has a purpose. We have a gift to share. And in sharing that gift, we come into this life through these sabbats, you know, on a yearly basis, through these sabbats of our life cycle, through these sabbats of our each month menstrual cycle and our lunar phase. We have all of these opportunities to check in. This spring equinox is also associated with the first quarter moon. So it's about preparation. This is a time in our life where we want to plan. We want to kind of go, yep, this is what I've got and this is what I can take and this is what I need and this is how I'm moving forward. There's a lot of energy at this stage, this bubbling, beautiful, gorgeous energy. And it's really, really nice to check in with your inner young man or your inner maiden and ask what she would like to do with this energy and how would she like to be honored and celebrated in a way that helps her to heal those wounds that she feels she's been telling herself for her whole life. And you can do that through enacting a beautiful maiden ceremony for yourself. Or if you do have a gorgeous gaggle of sisters, you know, get together this spring um, equinox and sit in circle and make some crowns and move 
from being an adolescent to a young lady in conscious awareness of being woman, of conscious awareness of stepping into your power because you're meeting your power. There is so many resources on my website for meditations if you want the Awakened Divine Feminine app. There are beautiful guidances within that, all free, that you can hook into to you know, help you re, like, run your circle. There's even the ultimate circle checklist if you wanted to actually get a group of women together and, and have a spring equinox circle. Grab that checklist. It's free. It's, I'll put the link in the show notes. I was going to say it's on my website, but I actually don't think it is yet. So grab it from the show notes below and bring your community together. Sometimes that can be a little disheartening, not disheartening, but a little uh, confronting and challenging because you feel you're being put out there and everyone's going to be listening to you. But you could also ask every single person to research something about spring equinox and to have a two to five minute, two to ten minute, how many women you've got, depends on how long you'll have to share, but share something they have learned or they experienced for themselves around the spring equinox. There is so much energy available to you right now. Also coming into the Libran new moon in a couple of days post the equinox, because the equinox is the 23rd of September and the new moon falls, I think, on the 26th from memory. So listen out for the next podcast, which will come in a couple of days around the Libran new moon. And the energy surrounding this is that we're now in a balsamic moon phase, which is like kind of irritable and well, let's think of it as the PMS stage if you're not in balance. It's also where you've come through the harvest and you've got the wisdom if you've been working with your intention the whole way through the month. And if you would like to start learning how to work with your intention the whole way through the month, I have a beautiful membership site, which was called The Sacred Ones, um, which is morphing and changing in the next lunar month, starting with the Libra new moon. And it is going to be called, I think, Lunar Woman. And this means it allows you to tune into the cycle of the moon and each quarter of the moon, each phase of the moon, even eight, even each eight phases of the moon, we have journal prompts, we'll have a power practice, whether that be a meditation, a ritual, something to incite within you, ways of learning how to work with setting new intentions every single month. And it's also working with setting intentions every single bleed. So it's kind of like, yes, when we're in alignment, we do bleed with the new moon, but without today's society, that often doesn't happen. So what actually then happens is you get two opportunities to set your intention for that month and reinforce what's going on. But you also can have polar energies happening. And when you understand that, it's easier to ride the waves of emotions, of energy, of you know why you can't get out of bed in the morning or why you can't do that presentation at work because last week you would have felt like it was awesome but this week you just can't get your words out. All of that sort of unraveling, unfolding is going to be part of the Lunar Woman membership and it is a beautiful membership that's evolving that's only 27 Australian dollars a month and you actually get your first month free. <clears throat> so again, I'll chuck the um, link for that into the show notes and yes, you put your um, credit card details in but you can cancel any time in that 30 days if, you don't, if it doesn't align with you, there's no questions asked but then you will actually just be billed then every 30 days um, with that credit card if you so choose to stay with us. Because aligning yourself back to your birthright, back to being a cyclical being, back to honoring these solar festivals or Sabbaths is such a powerful portal to be able to understand yourself. Because when we understand ourself and we understand that, okay, well, I'm in this budding phase of life I'm in this spring energy, which it's the peak of spring. <clears throat> Not that you'd know that in Victoria and Australia at the moment because it has been bitterly cold. Um, but it is this 
element, no, element, this energy of waking up, this element of this energy of coming into or stepping into a next chapter, this whole coming from child to maiden, this free, fun, carefree, really about me and all of that kind of Aries, beautiful energy that, you know, is also so associated with this time. It's this energy where we play. And I love the women's circles that I run around the spring equinox because we wear crowns, we wear dresses, we sing, we, you know, we reenact what we would have loved to have happened for us within our, when we got our maidenhood. And it's a way of healing those layers within. So the practices I invite you to feel into this spring equinox is to check in with your inner maiden and to really feel into what she would have liked to have happened for her when she actually got her first bleed. And then do it, act on it, sit in sacred circle with your sisters, be part of a sisterhood and start to heal the sister wound because when we sit in sacred circle, there's no room for judgment. There's no room for self-criticism. There's no room for, you know, competition or comparison. The healed sisterhood is where we listen with the ears of our heart and we're fully present with each other. And as we do that, we have the sense of belonging and acknowledgement of self and others, so much so that we can have that true knowing of I can do this and I can step into my power. I can start to, you know, listen to those whispers within and feel into what is this spring equinox message for me? What is my power if you haven't been living it already? And even if you have been living it, is there another deeper layer to your power, to your medicine that you carry into this world? And I literally have just been on Wilderness Solo and that's a... Oh, it's an eight, nine day journey where there is a three day lead in and then you sit in the wilderness for three days and three nights with nothing but water and a tarp. And this time we did a feminine version where we had a little tent as well. And I was very grateful for my sleeping bag because it was very, very cold. And we had our drums and we drummed through the night. We drummed for our healing. We drummed for the emotions and the thoughts that were coming through and this whole balsamic moon right now, then leading into, you know, this beautiful spring equinox, then into this new moon. It's like that wilderness solo for me is like shedding all of these layers so I can drop into the next version of me, the next version of my work so that I can be of service to you. Hence why the sacred ones is evolving through many messages I received from the moon while on Wilderness Solo, that the lunar woman is calling, that she wants to be understood, that she wants to be the reminder for women to become more cyclical beings. And it's not to become more cyclical, be cyclical, cyclical beings, it's about remembering. Because, you know, women have sat in circle for longer than we haven't. The age of the goddesses where, you know, we're in this patriarchal world where they've used this energy of divide and conquer for women it's like put them all in separate houses don't let them share family commitments definitely don't let them use their healing gifts or we'll burn them as witches don't let them speak out of turn and don't let them come together in circle because that is where the patriarchy knows that power happens magic happens when sisters sit in circle where we are fully seen, heard and held. And if you want to be in sacred circle with me every full moon, it is part of the Lunar Woman membership or you can join just for the full moon circle every single month. And that is a beautiful deep dive into being held, being heard, being celebrated being whole unto yourself whilst belonging to a sisterhood 
And that is one of the biggest reasons why I have begun this membership is so that women can find their tribe, so that they have a space to feel into and be together with such beautiful vulnerability and such beautiful, raw, wild emotions that come from stepping into our power and stepping into our passions and listening, truly listening and acting upon those voices we hear within the whispers of our soul, because this is soul work, aligning with the Sabbaths, knowing this spring equinox portal and how to work with it. This is about connecting with your soul. This is about coming home to yourself. So beautiful maiden, what are you going to do this spring equinox? What are you going to do with the energy portal that's available to you now and over the next week or so? The equinox itself is in two days time, but it's not like with this wheel of life, with the medicine wheel, there's not one definitive, this is happening now. There is, but it's also we're feeling this lead up to it now. It peaks and then it declines. It's exactly the same. There is one cycle in life with many, many different durations of that cycle and all that comes in like bell curves where it builds and builds and builds, it peaks and it drops. And we must have this spring building possibility energy for us to then come into Beltane, the, the fertility festival, to then come into summer solstice where we're magnetic and that's where the full bloom rose is and she smells divine and giving off all this perfume and attracting everyone from the outside world to look at me because I am... I am me and I'm smelling beautiful and I'm gorgeous. And then that beautiful full bloom rose, some of the petals start to wilt or fall off. The smell is still there. It's still gorgeous as she comes around into that Marga energy. And then by the time we're wilting, we're decaying, we're harvesting, we're coming around even further to the point where all the leaves have all the, fla- the petals have fallen from the flower. And what is held within, in the winter solstice, in the crone energy, is the wisdom and destiny of the seed and a new beginning. This, my darling, my maiden friend, is the energy where we've come out of the seed, we've been brave enough from winter solstice through in bulk to send down our roots to put up our shoots, to grow into a, a plant and, and to, bloom, to start building this beautiful flower so we can be part of this universal dance called life of birth, growth, full bloom, decay and death. Rebirth, growth, full bloom, decay and death. This is the wheel of life. This is the medicine wheel. And this is where we are in the growth phase. What is it that you want to grow? How can you plan to grow this part of you so that you can step into your most truest and aligned version of you so that your beautiful magic and medicine can be shared with the world? Comment below and let me know. What are you finding within? Where is the balance? What are the gifts? Where is the growth? I love you, fellow maiden sister, in your beautiful everythingness that is you. And I will see you when I see you where I see you. Bye for now.